are here for a virtual artist talk and tour with Brian Walter Wagner for his exhibition Through the Window. I'm Janice Cotter, the gallery manager. And before we begin this evening, I would like to take a moment to thank our departing board president, Kathy Chenna, for her years of service supporting the Poem Arts community. And I'd also like to welcome our new board president, Amanda Shrinko. Amanda? Just, oh, sorry, to say a few words about our sponsors. <laughs> sorry. Thank you, Janice. And thank you again to Kathy for all of her years of amazing service to Poem Arts. Poem Arts would like to thank our longtime supporters, the City of Port Moody as well as the province of British Columbia through the, their support through the Community Gaming Program and Peller Estates. I would also like to thank our 2021 gallery sponsor, local developer Edgar, for their generous support. Totaling $15,000 for the year, the sponsorship with Edgar allowed Poem Arts to continue to offer public exhibitions during this difficult time, grow our digital footprint, and build a foundation upon which Edgar's own Woodland Public uh, Public Woodland Park Public Art Plan. <laughs> ah, I have a difficult time saying that. <laughs> can further enhance and support the arts in our community. We are grateful for Edgar's support and for their dedication to uplifting the arts in our community. I would now like to introduce Jan Ballard with Ballard Arts, Edgar's Public Art Plan. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just a privilege to be here in this uh, wonderful art space and, and to be here in the uh, Port Moody uh, community. Um, I'm here representing uh, Edgar uh, for their Woodland Park uh, redevelopment project. Uh, it has a uh, wonderful public art plan, full of ideas, very exciting, and an unprecedented uh, amount to be spent on public art. 2.8 million. So that's a fairly significant uh, amount that will contribute in a significant and exciting way to arts and culture within <coughs> Port Moody and the surrounding community. So thank you very much. Oh, and I just wanted to say, pardon me, that uh, on July 20th, there is the public hearing. So I just encourage and invite you to come out in support of the development as well as the, the public art. Uh, Piece. So that's July 20th at 7 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Jen, um, for speaking, <coughs> and thank you, Jen, for their incredible sponsorship of Home Arts. Um, it's a beautiful evening in Port Moody, and I'm so glad that you could join us for the second of three artist talks for our current exhibitions. Um, Ryan Walter Wagner is a Vancouver-based artist and photographer, and in his work he focuses on telling stories with a unique eye on helping to lift up underrepresented voices and on featuring current events and social issues. Ryan is here this evening to tell us about his work on Through the Window and to give us a tour of the gallery. So, Thank you, and you'll meet Ryan. Hello, everybody. I am Ryan Walter Wagner, and this is my photo exhibit through the window. Um, as for me, as Janice mentioned, I'm a photographer and artist uh, living and working in Vancouver, BC, um, beginning of COVID 19 pandemic. I was working as a photographer where everything was canceled or slowed down, just like everybody. And to keep myself off the couch and to keep my head out of the depression, I gave myself some assignments. And one of the assignments I thought of as I was falling asleep one night about March 14th, March 15th, 2020, I thought, you know, I can't have people into the studio and do portraits. This is a really wild, crazy, weird time and nobody knows what's going on. Why don't I start to document it? Why don't I take portraits of people experiencing this unknown? So at that point, I fell asleep. And I woke up the next morning, and this is probably the first time it's ever happened to me, but I 
remembered my idea from falling asleep the night before. And so as I drank my morning tea, I just put a little post on my Facebook to some friends. If anybody's interested in a portrait right now, well, I'll come over and do it. Let's just do something. Let's not think about the insanity that we're trying to we're living with right now. So I put that post up, I finished my cup of tea, and 10 minutes later I had a couple emails in my inbox, and I had it out there that day, 15 minutes later, and I took this very first photo right here of my friend Janet. So from that day forward, I was just getting more and more requests. So every day, from March, April, May, into June, and maybe one or two in July, I was photographing three to seven people every single day from Vancouver to White Rock, to Langley, to Surrey, to Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam, and of course here in Port Moody, and back to Vancouver, and into North Vancouver, and West Vancouver. I photographed over 250 people for the project, um, and I met so many people, an amazing amount of people. Um, like I said, starting with Janet here, and then, I mean, most of the people here I maybe have met or seen or know friends of friends, but also a huge number of the people that I photographed was the first time meeting them. They just heard about my project through friends of friends, and uh, here we are. So also through the project, um, aside from you know getting some media attention, I was on the news and uh, morning news and that sort of thing. I also had a Beatroot magazine, a music publication. They came to me and said, hey, we really like this project, it's super interesting. It's kind of bringing people together. It's giving us something, else, a different way to think about the pandemic and what's happening. Let's do a word music magazine. Let's line up some musicians and we'll have you go and photograph them. So it became that project. And then another publication came to me and said they wanted to do some sponsorship ads and they wanted to use my project as part of the sponsorship. So then I was hired to go and create my project for another publication. So. Through all of that, it was very obvious that it was really bringing people together in an interesting way, in a thoughtful way, because aside from just going and showing up and photographing, and we'll have a little walk around here and look at some of the photos, but you'll notice right away that some of the people maybe are kind of just in sweatpants, or some people are in costumes and having a little fun, whereas other people I would show up and they would be hair curled, makeup on, just looking perfect is because I was the first person that they had seen. It was the first thing for them to do in such a long time because we're all sitting at home doing nothing. So for me to show up and take some photos was a little bit of excitement also in other people's lives. So, and then the process of getting the photos back and sharing the photos became another aspect. So it was kind of nice to know that I had a part in taking people's minds off of, um, you know, COVID. Um, but let's have a little walk around and look at some of the photos. I'll talk about some of the people. Um, let's start right here with Abigail. It's, I love this photo of her. Um, this is a really fun day. Um, she has a really cool place that she lives in. I just thought this photo is one of the most striking photos that I did do for the project. And that's why we blew it up to 30 by 20. Um, with some of these little ones, they're pretty fun. Um, this is a, a fun couple, Ryan and Anita, where they wore some costumes. There's, there, obviously I took lots of photos of everybody, um, so there's some pretty hilarious ones of them. Um, we got Joey Keithley, AKA Joey Shithead from DOA, also, um, um, I think he's a Burnaby city councilor. Um, and there's a lot of pets, a lot of pets. This is Django. Uh, <laughs> And then as we go here, this is the Huberts. This is one of my favorite photos of the whole project. Super fun photo of them. I think they're going to get a copy of it when we're done here. And then we have some more small portraits of lots of families. Lots of families here. This is a, a couple, um, Gareth and Tiffany, and I think they're from New Zealand. And so they were celebrating Gareth's birthday when I showed up. So they had a couple drinks. It was, a, it was a fun party with me out on the front lawn. But it was, again, another fun thing to be able to capture for them. is like, they're ha we all had COVID birthdays. Some of us had two COVID birthdays. I had two COVID birthdays. So I thought it was kind of fun to see a COVID birthday where they're both having, like, 
fun. They're enjoying it. You know, this is this is getting later. This is like May, June. So these people's moods are maybe lifting a little bit more than they were in the earlier shops that I would do. Where you can see a little bit more somber expressions in these sorts. Um, that's Dawn She lives in North in North Vancouver. Uh, this is a special one for me because this is my sister and her family. So my two little nieces, my brother-in-law, my sister Heather. Hi Heather, if you're watching. And again, this is actually a, a, a good wall of a lot of people that I really met for the first time through this project, where we have roommates living together, you know, single moms with their kids, um, couples with their dogs, freshly engaged couples with their dogs. Um, yeah, and then we move along here. <clears throat> and here I have Ian and Jenny. Um, Ian contacted me, he had heard about the project through a friend, so I showed up. Uh, Ian and I kind of hung out and talked for a bit, and then Jenny showed home, got home from work that day. And this photo I have just absolutely loved. It ended up being the cover of the book that we published on the project. Um, one of my whole, one of my favorites in the whole project here. Um, another really great one here is Raya. Now I met Raya through her mom, who called me up near the end of my project. And again, she you know she heard it through a friend. Um, and she wanted me to come and, and uh, do the portraits. She didn't necessarily want to be in them, but she knew her daughter really did. So we did a really, really fun set of photos. Probably the most photos I took of the whole project was of Raya. Um, there was a few personal aspects incorporated into the photo, um, which, I, which was really nice to be a part of, a nice, um, that they trusted me to take those photos. Because it, you know, to me, it had a lot, a lot of meaning in taking these photos of Raya. And then we go along here, and this, this spot here is of Christy. Now, I have two photos of her. There is, again, it was a, a perfect day. And the reason that it was perfect for me is that you walk into this courtyard and there's a beam of light shining right on this window here. So obviously I got Christy to poke out in. Another fun thing about this location was I got a call one day from City TV and said, hey, tomorrow morning, we'd like to do a feature on your, on your project of you photographing these people. We're doing features of artists that are doing work through the pandemic. Um, so this is the location that they showed up at. It's a, it's a beautiful building with downtown, like Beaver Bros. And, um, so yeah, we spent some time there. And if you ever saw the City TV feature, then you would have seen me wandering around there talking a lot more serious than I am right now. And here's a little bit of a closer shot of Christy in that same window. And uh, I just want to turn around and show this spot real quick. Because we built, if you come down to the show here at, the, at Pomo Arts, you're gonna see this. And this is the back of it, we'll go around the front in a second. But I built this window so you can come here and take your own through the window portraits. I just like the back of it because of the wallpaper here. I thought that's really cool. And we don't get to see it too much because all the photos are taken from the other side. So if you come down, take a picture from either side, it should be fun. All right, moving along, we've got some bigger prints again. We're at 30 by 20 prints here. Um, now, the interesting, this is Jenny and this is Robin. I mean, the Jenny one is obviously a striking photo. It's one of, again, one of my favorites. Obviously, the bigger ones are going to be some of my favorite photos from the project. This one here is Robin. And again, Robin was one of the first, probably the second or the third day that I was working on this project. She had just got back to Canada from a trip. So she had been quarantined. Oh, no, it would have been two weeks through because she was quarantined and I met her I think on her 12th or 13th day of quarantine and she was on the second floor of an apartment I met in the alley and this is where we made this photo and I was the only person she had seen it up to that point so again that was another interesting aspect of uh, here I am doing these portraits in the middle of a pandemic where the world is so wound up so tight and everybody is on edge and nobody is sure and everybody's a little bit scared and I'm creating this project while all of these feelings are emanating through the world, at least through our part of the world. And I felt a little guilty, to be honest, because first of all, there's no traffic out. So I'm getting from now on into the city the other 15 minutes, no matter where I wanted to go. And it was fun. And I felt guilty because I was out and about and everybody was sitting at home. But at the same time, here I was, so fortunate to be able to experience the pandemic through 250 different sets of eyes. Like, 
the different experiences just from these two people and these people and these people. Everybody had such a unique view, a unique experience, a unique outlook of what was happening. So for me to be able to go and speak with everybody on very open, candid conversations that were sometimes they were really heavy and sometimes they were really light and sometimes they were really, really, really heavy where I would get back to my car and I would just cry from listening to somebody speak about how they're dealing with everything or how their hardships are coming about. So, having said, as I'm bouncing around feeling excited that I get to have something to do, which for myself was important because I knew that I was going to get really depressed with having all of my activities, all of my work, everything just torn away from me. So to give myself this project and see it, putting like giving people a little bit of something different in their lives at that point was very fulfilling. But really, the ability to experience it through all these different people, um, I think, was a very privileged and unique perspective that I got to experience myself. And I mean, I'm so thankful for every single person that's hanging on the wall in these photographs for sharing all of that with me and for wanting me to come and document the weird ass time that we're sitting through and not knowing how it's going to go. And, and making these images that they're gonna be able to hold on to forever and look back on and say, you know, I remember, look at this crazy thing, like we were stuck inside. So um, I guess there's just so many aspects to this project that, for, I mean, for me personally, and then when I, you know, even just tonight, I spoke to three different people that I've never met before and they talked to me about what they thought about and that's my favorite part about, uh, about making art and sharing art is, you know, I have my purpose for it, I have my reason and my meaning for sharing it, or, you know, just going through the process of doing it. But I really enjoy hearing what people have to say about it and, and how they reflect upon it, too. So, yeah, it's, really, it's, it's a really beautiful thing, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Let's have a look at a couple more photos over here. So here we have um, Farah and Jenny. So these were both photos that I took um, where they were assigned to me. Um, again, two publica publications came to me and said, we really like this project. We want to incorporate it in what we're doing. So a music publication came and said, let's feature musicians. So they gave me a list of musicians. I contacted them and I went around and I photographed musicians for the same project published in a music paper. And Jenny is from a band called IMUR, uh, and I was photographed her for that. Another publication came to me and said that they were gonna do some sponsored posts and some sponsored ads, and they wanted to use my project as an inspiration for those. So again, they set me up um, with people to photograph in their homes, exactly the same project, but now it was being paid by a corporation to go and do them. And this photo of Farah is one of those ones I did. I drove up to Delta and met with her, and she was fantastic. This was actually one of my favorite photos and almost made the cover of the book had Farah on her love of this back in time. <laughs> but she didn't, so she missed out on that. But again, one of my favorite photos. Um, so let's move down here again. This is one of Zach, and I took a photo of Zach at his place in Kitsilano. And he's a musician, he plays in a band called The Zolas, and we were talking earlier, I think both of us love this photo. This is, again, one of my favorites. Like I say, you come and look, the big ones are generally the ones that I like the most. But I just love the lighting on this one. You know, this is on street level, I'm standing on the sidewalk, he flipped open the window. There was a few photos with his cat that popped in and stuff, but then the cat scratched the shit out of him and we let that go. Um, again, another couple that I had never met, and there's there so many of them. I mean, the birthday couple I spoke about earlier, these people that I don't even know how they heard of me, honestly, but they got in touch with me and I showed up. And every single time, every single person, I mean, you can tell more in this photo because they've got big smiles on their face and they're having a lot of fun. And they were having a fun evening in their, in, in their apartment that night. Um, so again, you get this fun experience and you get a little bit more of a somber experience, which I feel every photo is so unique in that way that it really gives a, a, a pretty well-rounded feeling of, of what it was like to be stuck in our homes during those months. Um, another little collection of some smaller photos. Some of these are actually some of my favorites. I did this one of Sean and Lori. Um, in Gastown, and I actually 
Sean tipped me off and told me that there was a building across the alleyway, excuse me, that um, I could go up and, and photograph from across the alleyway. So we organized that and got this photo here. I really love that. And again, this is another one of the very first ones, Cam and Katie. Um, I, I don't photograph weddings, but I actually photograph their like secret elopement and it was a super fun day. Um, so they live in a third floor apartment. So it was kind of fun to get those photos too that were quite far away. I mean, it worked, it's nice to see these close ones where you can get a lot of detail, but I thought I did a bunch of photos where they would be in third, fourth, fifth floors um, just to really show that distance and that separation. And again, that, that's a big part of the project too, is like through the window with the glass and everything, this is creating the separation that we all really had built into our lives. And we're just starting to get back, you know? Um, everything isn't really back yet. So we wanted to, and we're finally, we're just kind of going and doing it. But at the time, I wanted the glass to be that vision, and that's why it's called through the window. I wanted that glass to be that physical barrier that was representing really the separation that was forced upon us from what we were experiencing as a species. Um, so again, more, more families, more musicians, more people in the upper floors. I did have a couple of people, which I thought was funny. Um, one, one that comes to mind, a lady, you know, she had her young daughter, three-year-old daughter, can you come and do a portrait of us on our balcony? Yes, of course. I'll be there, send me your address down by Pacific Avenue in downtown. <clears throat> I pulled in the back alley and I'm kind of looking around, so I called her on my phone. I said, I'm out here, but I don't see you. And she said, oh, look up. And she happened to be on the 10th floor. <laughs> so that photograph, that photo session didn't last very long. I did, obviously, I'm going to take photos of it, do my best, and I kind of scrambled up some hills and tried to get some long perspectives of it. But I thought that was a, a funny thing that happened a couple times where I would get called to a person's house and, and I, maybe they couldn't really understand how the photos were going to be taken, fair enough. Um, but there were some people who were very, very far away. Now there's one of Karen. Where is it? There is one that I, oh, it's, it, we'll get to it here, we're gonna come up to it. But that, I'll, I'll talk about that one when we get there. But that was one that was very far away as well. Um, so let's move on to these two photos. And I thought these are really good representation, just of the two different emotions where, you know, they're quite serious, they're just looking out upon the world, and then here they're kind of like enjoying each other. So I like, like, they, like these two together for that aspect of like, it's not all this way, it's not all that way. We were really doing a lot. Now, this day in particular, prior to that, I had met some people and they owned a business, and so I did their portraits, and we sat and we talked about like how we were experiencing it. And their life was extremely heavy. And it was one of those instances that I spoke about earlier. That it's like, I did the photo session, we, we sat around and we chatted for half an hour, hour, I don't even know how long. And I went back to my car and I just like, I sobbed because it was so heartbreaking to see people going through these difficult things, but with such brave faces. Like, it almost seemed like it didn't affect them because they were being so strong about it. But it just felt so heavy to witness these people heavy things because in my mind I was pretending none of that shit was happening and <laughs> just doing whatever I could in front of me. Um, so again, then, then I showed up to their house after that and I had never met them before. Uh, again, they're friends of friends kind of thing. Um, and I showed up and at their second, third floor apartment, I'm in the back alley and I'm feeling quite heavy and emotional when I get there. And I'm trying not to be because I'm meeting these people for the first time and I don't think anybody wants to be heavy and emotional when you meet someone for the first time. But that being said, you know, I had an amazing conversation with Amy just about that, about how heavy everything was feeling at that point. You know, now we're into probably May at this point when I showed up at their house, and it was just like piling on and piling on. And we experienced much more piling on it as the year went on, but at that point, that was one of the, I don't want to call it a breaking point, but it was a point that felt very emotional to me from just hearing everybody's experience. How much it just sucked. It just sucked. And maybe this is a way to make it suck a little bit less. Um, okay, so we've got one little batch of photos here at the end. So what I put here is uh, a couple families. Now these are younger families with toddlers and babies. Um, 
in the Cahills, and I really loved them. They um, had a, a beautiful set of portraits that I did for them, and we made prints, a lot of prints for them to hang on their walls and stuff. But again, just wonderful conversations. Like every time I look at all of these photos, I just, I just have like good feelings because everybody is so nice. And like I say, it was a break in their day, a break in their routine, a break in the world and the news cycle and pandemics and Trump and all of this bullshit just swirling and you have no escape from it because you have to stay at home. So for me to show up, it was a bit of a relief, I think, for some people just to, to talk and be silly if you wanted or talk serious if you wanted. So when I look at every single one of these photos, I just have these warm feelings of these people are all very special to me. Whether we spoke for five minutes, 10 minutes, or I spent a couple hours hanging out on their, sitting on their front lawn while they chatted from their front porch. Um, so I wanted to mention this photo here of Karen. So it looks very similar to this one. This is Trish and this is Karen. Now Trish, she's on, I believe, the third floor of her apartment. Karen is about a block and a half, probably two blocks away from me. So I never met her face to face. I called her on my phone when I arrived and she showed me where she was in her apartment. So I said, okay, let me find a spot. And I found this stairway to climb up the back of a building. And so I put my phone down on the speaker and there she was two blocks away from me and we made these photos. And again, some of my favorite ones, just you know, the brick and everything just looked really solid. It would have been cool if we had a stranger in this photo, but it uh, has to be realistic as well. Um, and again, so obviously these are all matching here. Christina is, is, was wonderful and she's a huge supporter of arts. So I felt very uplifted when I did this photograph. My girlfriend loves this set as well, so I love it now too. Um, I'll get ahead up with Trish here. Um, Trish is an awesome person. She's a nurse. Everybody that knows her is going to tell you that they love her. This is the first time I ever met her. She left me with a gift. She was absolutely wonderful to talk to. Um, but the thing that stood out to me was recently, um, she, she sent me a message and said, you know, she picked up, so we published a book of all the photos, or most of the photos, um, which you can pick up at the front desk at Pomo Arts. Um, so Trish called me and she got a copy of the book and she said, you know, Ryan, I'm going to be leaving Vancouver and I'm not taking very much with me, but one of the things that I'm taking with me was really important because there's so many people that I know from Vancouver are in this book, um, but she's taking the book with her and that was just like one of the, I mean, that was very touching to hear that this resonated with somebody. I mean, I've got lots of messages from people speaking in that way, but that was one in particular that she's taking this as a definite memento with her to a different place so that she can do different things. Um, so yeah, that is the show. And if you do come here, we have built a little window where you can come. We saw the wallpaper on the other side. so. I built this with uh, my friend Mark. He owns a company, Scene Signs, so check them out if you need any 3D signs. Uh, so you can come here and you can take your own photo and you can hashtag through the window Pomo and you can tag Pomo or myself, Ryan Walter Wagner. Um, so make sure you do that. Make sure you come down, visit the gallery, and there's a couple other great shows here. Um, and that's it. I'm going to sign off. We're good to go. You want to say something? <laughs> no. <laughs> We're going to have a little talking now. Oh, great. Right. Okay. So here comes Jen. So, no, you can just stay there and I'll just talk. You can be here. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> and I'll just talk from here. Perfect. So, um, uh, I wanted to know what um, some of the deciding factors were for the various locations in how you approach the setup and the photographs look and style because you spoke to the fact that some of them are up on well, that was the 10th of, floor. Yeah. Well, that, to me that was part of the challenge, part of what could keep my mind busy. Like I spoke a lot about like pandemic and trying to keep our minds off of it and, and focus on something else. So for me that was part of the fun of having a challenge of showing up to a location that I, I've never been to before. 
So there's a few things that I would have to deal with in those situations. One, like I spoke of the people on the 10th floor, and what do I do in that situation? Or even the fourth floor. Um, so for me, I would show up, I would meet the person, whether it was by phone, or they poke their head out the window, or whatever it was, and I would quickly wander around the spot. And I'm looking at reflections in the glass mostly because the window, is, the project is based on the glass, really. Um, so a lot of it would be seeing what's reflecting in the window and what I can work with. So sometimes maybe we went to the sunny side of the house, like Robin's, where the light is pouring on her. And other times that maybe couldn't work because there was a weird reflection in the window. So then we would go to the dark side, the, the, the shaded side of the house. And so for me, it was very much a challenge to show up and make sure I could do it. It didn't always work, but it, it, it usually worked. <laughs> well, I just noticed that the, um some of them you have people, you have people coming out of the window. Yeah. And how did, how did you make the decision on, I mean, obviously it, the window has to open. <laughs> yeah. Other than that factor. <laughs> and, and again, it would be all on the fly. Um, I, well, I needed to incorporate the glass, so if, they, if anybody ever suggested, you know, sometimes maybe I would do it from their front door, but I wouldn't put it in the project, I would provide them with the photo. I was using very specifics to include in the project. So in, in many of these cases, we tried both. So we would have the window closed and I'd ask them if it opens, if it opens, let's do some poses that way. So pretty, almost everyone here, we didn't just shoot the one, the one location. Um, Raya is a great example where I photographed on every, every side of the house and then we selected the photos that worked the best because some of them wouldn't work. Right. So I looked at it as a way to get variety, and then when I called the photos at the end, I had more interesting stuff to show rather than just one. So, yeah. Now, um, I read an article in um, Vancouver is Awesome yes. uh, that was printed March 20th of last year. Mm -hmm. March 20th, you had 50 pictures done mm -hmm. already. Yeah. Portraits. Well, like I say, I started it right away, and 10 minutes after announcing that I wanted to do it, I had the first person, and by the time I got, I went and photographed them right away, and by the time I got home, there was probably five more, and that just kept happening. So, you're right, I'm on the 20th, we're seven days into shutting down, and I've done, but that's what it was. It was, it was, I would go and photograph seven, eight people a day. So I'm going from here, I'm going from Port Moody, then I go to Port Coquitlam, then back to Vancouver. So I was all over the place. And like I say, I, I dove into that work as a way to keep myself motivated. Um, and so bless all these people for allowing me to do that. Um, but that's why, is because people were really, you know, it was that early part. And that was when we were going and you know, buying all the toilet paper and, and everybody's kind of panicking a little bit. So I think that the ability to have this little aspect for two reasons, to document it, and like I said before, is just to take our minds out of it a little bit. Have something different to do with our day. And I think that that is exactly what happened mm -hmm. because I know people who are in the yes. photos. <laughs> uh, one, one couple, anyway, <laughs> newly engaged. <laughs> no, um, and um, I think it really lifted spirits. Yeah. And that's one, that's one thing I noticed a lot when you when I would show up to people's and everybody, I felt like I did a job once as an ice cream man for a couple months and that was a job where you roll around and everybody's happy to see you. They just, they're happy to see the ice cream man. So I felt, it was very similar to me where I was showing up and everybody was happy. They were, I'm here, the photographer's here, we're gonna do something. We're gonna take the mundaneness of our day and add something to it. We don't have to just sit here and do our work and then go to the couch and watch TV. I'm going to have a shower, I'm going to get ready because I'm giving them a little bit of purpose, right? So it was very joyful to show up pretty much every place that I showed up at. It was great. Now, I, um, I know this isn't the only sort of social enterprise project that you've done. Yeah. Um, you have quite a long list of uh, projects that you've done to raise people's voices. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You, is that something I know you have a commercial side to your business, yes. but you have a very strong social side to your business? Definitely. Do you want to speak to Yeah, that? so I do have a, a corporate entity in my photography career that is a studio on its own, but as an individual photographer, yes, I, I do like to cover a lot of the topics 
um, like I say, it's just to kind of uplift or start conversations for and about people that maybe are, una are unable to lift them, their voices up themselves. I feel like maybe I'm in a position that I can share those words. Um, one project I'm working on right now is a portrait project um, of adults diagnosed with ADHD. Uh, and this has been an amazing project. It's, you know, I've been doing it for a couple months now, and it's similar. I mean, these portrait projects work in the same way. You, you know, people hear about it and they want to get involved. And I'm finding the same thing with this to bring that sort of um, awareness to what's happening in that aspect of people's mental illness. And just through it, I'm no expert in it, but lots of people are coming and asking me, and I think I might. I think this might be something about me. What do I do? I, so I'm able to at least lead people into different ways to help themselves, right? So that's important to me because I want that myself too. And it starts with discussion. It really does because we want to take the stigma out of these things because if you have, and I'm going to use the ADHD because that's the one we're talking about. If, if ADHD is a thing for you, about you, um, there's such a stigma about things like that, right? You feel like you're automatically judged and people will automatically judge you because there isn't, a, it's not talked about. And if you don't have a discussion, you don't learn about it and then you just put those walls down and shut that out of your life. So if we can come up and say, you see a photo, oh, you know, I'm just like a regular person, and they're saying they have this thing. Well, maybe it's not as weird or as I think it is. Maybe I want to look into this a little bit more. Or maybe that's a little close to how I feel about myself. What do I, maybe I need to explore myself a little bit more. So to be able to bring those things up is really important. And this ADHD project is definitely one that is happening where a lot of people are discovering. And discovery is beautiful. Um, um, we do have a question from Rose okay. um, on okay. Facebook <laughs> okay. um, who wants to know about the, this window specifically. Is it from an old building? So this, the idea was to build something interactive for people. Um, so I got these windows for free off of Craigslist. And uh, I mentioned that my friend Mark from Scene Signs, uh, we built the wall. Um, together. So this is not real stucco, and I'm glad that you think it's a part of the real house because we did put a lot of effort in, in even to paint like fake kind of mold and stuff like this, but this is actually, I'm going to give the secret away, um, it's the spray for the ceilings, the popcorn ceilings. <clears throat> so that's what we covered it in, but the painting of it, and then yeah, we did some intentional painting to make it look like an old house, so thank you Rose for asking about that. I don't get to break about this. We're very proud about this for some reason. <laughs> it's so, always the little things. It is, it is, yeah. It was nice to see it to come together. It's one of those things where, oh, I got this idea, and then a couple months later, it's like, there's, it's in real life. It's, it's, a, it's fulfilling, you know? And we had talked about having windows yeah. from the very, very beginning. The, the initial and idea. how we would, you know, ways that they, you could incorporate. Exactly, them. yeah. So, um, this just turned out to be the funnest one because yeah. it, then it can have, you can come down and you can be involved. Yeah, and there are, you can tell them about the store. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, really, yeah. it looks high, but we, we've got a step, so if you have kids, so <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, I, I, I'm really interested in some of the other uh, projects, events that you have attended because mm -hmm. Um, so you talk about like the protests, the protests and, and yeah. things like that. I thought that was really interesting, mm -hmm. and it's a completely different style of photography than what you're doing for your portrait projects, what you're doing for the ADHD project, mm -hmm. or um, your commercial photography. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the area I consider more of my photojournalistic work. And again, I, most of the events that I would go and cover for that are, again, because I think those are important issues um, that if I can tell the story with my photographs, I feel like I can at least pitch in something, right? Because you can only do so much, and I feel like that's where my talent lies um, to help um, get word out about some of these organizations. Um, I know there was one yesterday that I really wanted to go to but I didn't get to attend to and that was the, the, the drug users in Vancouver asking for a clean supply. So they had a march um, down at Hastings, um, which is fairly close to my studio and I intended to go and cover that one I wasn't really able to. But again, I think that those are issues that are important 
Um, I attended the Council Canada Day um, March, and it was very moving. Um, the Women's Memorial March is another one that is very moving. And these are important issues that I don't think a lot of people really do know about. It can sometimes feel like that echo chamber when, when, you're, when you're at these events, right? Because I will be there photographing, and if it's a march, I'll often be at the front because I'm capturing them and I'll go in and out. But at the front is where you witness the bystanders standing there scratching their heads and be all, oh, everybody's got something to complain about. They have no idea what the issue is. So at those points, I will try to take time to say, well, actually, this is the issue and this is what these people are, are trying to talk about right now. Um, so for me, that's another way to do that is just by sharing my photographs. And I don't use my words, I use the words of the organization and what they stand for and what their message is. Because it's not about me, it's about them and showing what they're doing. I love doing that work. For me to go to an event like that and cover those people and share those photos with them is, is actually very nice as well because I get a lot of nice comments from people. Like, I thank you so much for capturing me in that moment while I was speaking about that particular subject. And you've got this very strong photo of me doing that. So, it's another small contribution, but something that I, I feel like I can do and do well at least. So it is it seems to be very emotionally rewarding for you. For sure. I mean, honestly, if there's plenty of times where I just put my camera down and I need to listen to this person because a lot of the topics are very heavy topics and and I think that they deserve the respect to be heard about that. So even though I'm there uh, documenting things and I will take lots of time to listen to what's going on and with the camera sometimes you get the privilege to get right to the front as well so um, so it's this fine balance of respect right I want to share and document what's going on but I also have to respect on how do I do it and how do I show that so I keep those things in mind when I'm taking my photographs especially at a public event like that where it's sensitive things where we're talking about residential schools and stuff like that that are really heavy topics that some people aren't ready to talk about or even ready to face or admit, you know? So I, I think that respect is due. Yeah. Um, you spoke about um, the emotional impact yeah. that Through the Window had on you. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes happy, sometimes sad. Yeah. Um, it appears that there, um, a lot of your work has that passion and that uh, emotional impact it, in it shows in your work Thank you. um, so how do you deal with that I mean they're not all happy situations no they're not but I don't think life is all happy situations um, for my photography even in my commercial work I like I, I, I need things to look the way that they look I need them to be the way that they are if you come for if you come to my studio for a headshot I'm gonna get it to look like you look. I don't want it to look like my version of you because my version of you is not real. And I and that trickles in from my personal work because that's how I feel about a camera. A camera is a pretty polarizing tool. When you pull out a camera, people change like that. If I'm walking down the street with my camera in front of me like this, every, every two or third, three person, they look at me and they look at my camera. Whether I'm going like this or going like this, the camera changes people. So my goal, and I've, I've learned it just through photographing so many people that don't want their photograph taken, in you know portrait situations, headshots, headshot situations, people get thrown into that. And they're like, you know, so my goal is always to make it realistic. And photojournalism is a way that I've turned into because of that ability to show it the way that it is. Not to change the angle or cut something out, like. This is how it is, and it's important. Like you say, it's like some of the experiences are happy and joy, we're having a laugh, and other times I'm left feeling like, oh my god, I don't want to talk to another person today. Um, but that's that's life, and that's and that's real, and I I, I, I want that to be. I, I like that you notice that sort of thing in my work, and to say that you see the passion is like a huge compliment to me. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, did you have any? Um remarks that you would like to I mean, my make. final remarks are just like, thank you, first of all, to Homo and to the city of Port Moody for um, granting me some money to put the show together, was, and but they were just super helpful. 
Um, and yeah, they, they pitched him some money to put, put the show together. Which grant was that? I can't remember. The art, I believe it was the Arts and Culture That's Committee right. art, Small Artist Grant? Correct, yes. Okay. Yeah, so they were super kind, super helpful, um, great communication, and yeah, I mean, it was, it was a great experience. I mean, writing a grant is a great experience, it was. <laughs> um, but most of all, I just really want to thank everybody that has asked me to come and photograph them through this, because it meant a lot to me. It means a lot to me, right? It's, a, it's been a big thing in my life, something that I was just doing to really stop myself from being feeling depressed about having nothing and snowball into like right now I'm doing an artist talk in a gallery. Like that's so wonderful that that's what was able to transpire from this. And I mean I'm not doing it without everybody that's here, like uh, including you guys. Like um, so I mean thanks everybody. <laughs> Well, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, I, I don't think we have any more questions. Okay. Um, can you hear me if I'm behind here? I don't know. Anyway, I just want to say uh, thank you very much for joining us this evening for Ryan's Artist Talk. And um, I hope you will be able to be back next Thursday, uh, July 22nd for Ron Love's um, artist talk, virtual artist talk that will also be live from the gallery for his exhibition, Whimsy in Wood and Paint. Thank you so much for joining us on another gorgeous, sunny, Port Moody summer evening. And here's Ryan to wave goodbye as well. Good night.